Hi, today we are going to look at using Polya's problem solving process to solve school management problems. Let's get into it. Let us do a quick review of Polya's problem solving process. Whenever there is a need to solve any school management problem, we must first understand the very nature of the problem. This means that we need to dissect the problem by exploring all possible angles so as to determine what is known about the problem. The problem solver also needs to be acutely aware of what is unknown about the problem and what is required to solve it. Finally, understanding the problem involves determining what type of answer is required to solve the problem. In this case, it may require some form of intervention. The next stage is to devise a plan. Devising a plan includes finding out some possible strategies or possible solutions that can be employed to solve the problem. It also includes listing the advantages or disadvantages of employing these strategies or possible solutions. Asking yourself if these strategies have locus standi is very important. This is because your chosen strategy or solutions must be able to withstand scrutiny in the court of law. One should also ask themselves if your chosen strategies or possible solution can be supported by your teacher's union, in this case tutor. The next stage is to execute the plan. This involves using the strategy or possible solution that simultaneously pose the least disadvantage and the greatest advantage. However, it must have met all the aforementioned criteria like having union approval and local standard. Finally, you should reflect on the entire process to determine whether there may be elements in the process that can be modified to bring about improvement. In your reflection, ask yourself these questions. Remember, the best laid plan of men and mice oft go awry. So if your chosen strategy did not bring about the desired results, then you start over the process. Let us look at a practical example. Mr. Thomas is the principal of Mount Grace Private Primary School. He noticed that he had been receiving myriads of complaints from parents of three of his teachers. The nature of the complaints almost always surrounds the infrequency in which mathematics is taught at the class level. This became a big problem since Mr. Thomas' primary concern is for public to have confidence in the education service the school offers. He perceives that excellence can only be achieved by excellent SEA results and good public relations. Use Polya's problem solving process solve Mr. Thomas's problem. To understand the problem, we must first devise a way of finding out if the allegations made are true or untrue. And how are we to know that? This can be determined by periodic walkthroughs, viewing the teacher's notes, viewing the student's notes, and remember, the student's notes do not always correspond with the teacher's notes. And finally, you can ask the teacher a series of questions in an interview. I would recommend you doing this last because your artifacts collected may be sufficient to validate your questioning. If the claims are true, the school administrator needs to find out 
what are the underlying cause of the problem. This may be determined by clinical supervision or by doing a training needs assessment by juxtaposing the skills and competencies required with those that are actually displayed by the teacher. Here are some of the skills and competencies that should be observed. The second stage is where we devise a plan. This may be synonymous to developing a training plan. You may have observed that the teacher or teachers may have had several areas of deficiencies. However, addressing the critical areas of deficiencies must be given priority. These include technological deficiencies, pedagogical deficiencies, and content knowledge deficiencies. After deciding on the area that is to be targeted, the school administrator can seek out the appropriate individuals with the skill set that can address the areas of deficiencies. Subsequently, there must be some monitoring or mentoring system to ensure that the plan is implemented with the expert guidance from a suitable individual that may be on staff. Plan a stakeholders meeting to apprise them of your intention and keep them informed of the progress and setbacks as the case might be. The plans that were conceived in stage two must be implemented. And remember, the school administrator must provide a mentor. This is to provide support for the teacher. Additionally, the head of staff should then periodically monitor the implementation process. This is to check for improvement. Whenever improvement is observed, I cannot overemphasize the importance of celebrating success. Praise the teacher for his accomplishments. This is supported by behaviorists like Thorndike and Skinner, and content theorists like McLean and Kreisberg. When a teacher is being praised for doing well, there is an increased likelihood of repeating the action. The final stage involves a comprehensive review of the entire process. In reviewing, you will need to ask yourselves the following questions. In summary, you investigate to determine whether or not the problem was solved. Also, you need to find out the ways of improving any part of the process. And finally, you make the necessary adjustments for improvement. This is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and please leave a comment below why do you think teachers notes do not always correspond with students notes i would love to hear from you